Hey, my name is John Ellison. I am an entrepreneur on a mission. And today is day three of a 30 day series where I'm going to share little snippets of my journey from starting out in university to dropping out to run an e-commerce company full time and failing miserably because I had no idea what I was doing all the way through to where I am now, uh, starting a new type of grocery store that is 100% zero waste, organic, and trying to be carbon neutral from the beginning. And today I'm gonna share with you one point in my journey that happened about six months ago where I completely changed my thinking about the climate crisis and my role in it. And I have to admit, it's gonna get a little bit intense here, but I promise you that the narrative is hope and that the call to action is clear because I do believe that we can make a difference and that we can work together to turn this thing around. So I grew up in Littleton, Colorado in a conservative evangelical home and bless him, my dad's one of those people who still thinks that climate change is a hoax. And I kind of had that mindset embedded in me from when I was young, but slowly it eroded over time. And I started getting really passionate about natural building and solar panels and clean energy and organic food and all of that along the way. But I never really looked at the science to see actually what is climate change and what does it mean for me and my future. But recently I was, I was traveling and as a new father, I was completely sleep deprived, kind of walking through this airport as a bit of a zombie. Um, had a little bit of time to kill and I remember uh, being struck by this book which had a dead bee on a white background and it said the uninhabitable earth a vision for the future and I remember opening this book and reading the first few paragraphs and being completely hooked because it basically said that the climate crisis is worse much worse than you think it is and that the delusion that says that climate change is a slow moving problem that you don't have to worry about is just as nefarious as the delusion that says it's not happening at all. And slowly the author changed my perspective from thinking about the climate crisis as a problem of rising temperature and rising seas to an interconnected network of problems and different cascading elements of chaos where yes, carbon emissions are causing an increase in temperature and that is causing rising seas, but it's also causing a whole host of other factors like wildfires and soil degradation and water pollution and air pollution and uh, novel viruses and wars as a result of famines and all of these things that are interrelated for how we live on the earth and are utterly dependent currently on fossil fuels that when we burn create emissions and worsen the complex situation in our atmosphere which is causing the temperatures to rise and we have this never-ending loop where everything that we do emits greenhouse gases and unless we do something quickly this whole devastation of ecosystems and mass extinction of species is going to hit us. And actually there is something that we can do. And that's where I really disagreed with the author. Bless him, he basically ended the book by saying, you know what, there's nothing that we can really do as individuals other than get our governments to make massive policy change. And I totally agree that we do need to lobby and petition and vote and protest and make our voices heard. But I also believe that as a behavior designer, that we each can do specific things to make a difference. And actually, the carbon footprint is an incredible trailing indicator that tells us our role and our contribution to this crisis. I started looking deeper and assessed my own footprint. Um, somewhere between 12 and 16 tons of CO2 per annum I emit just by being alive and doing the things that I do. Depending upon how much I travel, how much I fly, those numbers fluctuate. And I realized that there was basically a pie chart with different sections that were contributing to my carbon footprint and that I could identify key behaviors, specific things that I could do around food, around purchasing, uh, clothing, and uh, any goods in particular, about energy consumption, about travel, about all these different things, recycling, everything that I was doing I could do differently and live more lightly on the planet. 
and that not only I could do this for myself, but I could figure out a way to empower other people to do it. And so just before coronavirus hit, I was working on a behavior sprint with a project that I was calling Zero-Fi, as in like, Zero-Fi your carbon footprint. I had the pleasure of working with an amazing behavior designer called David No on this project. And our hypothesis was, could we make it really easy for people to do the right things that made a big difference in reducing their carbon footprint? And could we take somebody from where they were today when they first started using the product to zero emissions really, really quickly? And we knew that we could do a portion of that emission deduction through behavior change, but that the rest, because of things like military and these other factors that are outside of our control, would need to be offset by planting trees and investing in clean energy. And so we tested this hypothesis with 10 people to see A, could we get them to calculate their footprint? B, could we get them to choose specific behaviors that they actually wanted to do? Not to press people to do specific things, but let them choose. And then could we follow up with them and see if they actually did the behavior and then give them an impact assessment and show them the difference that they'd made? And to compound that factor of change by saying, if everyone in the world did what you did, here is the difference that we all would make together. And then we wanted to see if we could invite people to, to share this with their friends, to create little tribes of groups, of teams, of communities, families, you name it, working together, competing to reduce their emissions and using it as a game. And then coronavirus hit. And suddenly I was faced with this challenge of keeping my property management company, The Good Host, afloat. We were doing well, we'd grown our portfolio, we were hosting tourists all across the city here in Norwich, Norfolk. And then suddenly we had a 90% reduction in booking volume, almost overnight, as a result of the Airbnb cancellation policy. And we were faced with the need to pivot and we looked at the situation unfolding and realized that key workers and NHS staff would need places to stay. And so uh, we shifted our focus to exclusively hosting them and then discovered this next opportunity that actually they needed fresh food. They weren't able to get supermarkets, deliver supermarkets to deliver their goods. And so we set up Goodery, which is my next venture. And I'm looking at redesigning groceries from scratch such that they're 100% organic, totally online, zero waste and zero emissions. Because if I can make it easier for people to get their weekly shop in a way that actually cares for the planet, and if I can get loads of people buying right because it's easy, then I believe that I can make a difference. And so over the last four to six weeks, I've been really fortunate to have this amazing team come around me. <laughs> the likes of Caroline Mayers and Leon Davies and Sam Herons and John Osterbrock. I've had this amazing collective of people join me in this mission to try and change the way that we do food here in Norfolk. And I'm so excited to share that with you because this is just my response to COVID-19 and climate change. But I believe that we all can do things in our own lives, both personally and professionally, to make a difference. Because frankly, COVID-19 might just be a dress rehearsal for something much more severe. And if COVID-19 has a potential fatality rate of 1% or 2%, Imagine a potential crisis that could wipe out all of humanity in a hundred years. That's the climate crisis. Maybe it's 150, maybe it's 200 years. It doesn't matter the exact timelines. That is what is at risk. Our planet will be fine, but we won't if something serious doesn't change right now and time is running out. So I urge you, subscribe, stay tuned. I've got a path, I've got hope, I've got words of encouragement, I've got toolkits and productivity principles, a morning routine. I will share with you everything that I've learned if I can ask you to do all that you can to make the world a better place. Don't give up. Let's do this together.